Okay, this is a continuation of section 2.2 from Mac 1105. We were, we were looking at various characteristics of graphs, and we had just begun to look at uh, the relative max and relative min on functions, relative max being the high point, relative min being the low point. So for this first um, problem on this page, it had said to use the graph to find any values at which f has a relative maximum, which is the x value, and then use the equation to calculate the relative maxima, which is the y value. So we're in the process of doing that. At this x value, we see that there is a high point. What exactly is this y point? We're going to find through the actual equation 2x cubed minus 15x squared plus 24x plus 19. I have taken this x value, which um, represents the relative maximum, and I'm about to get the relative maxima. Okay, so let's see, one cube, one to any power is one. So one times two, that would be two. Again, one to any power is one. So one times negative 15, negative 15. One times 24 is 24. And then add 19. You might want to get your calculator involved at that point. You need to stick it in originally is kind of a little bit of a hassle. So if we put these numbers in, we have 2 minus 15 plus 24 plus 19. It's 15, 24, and 19, which turns out to be 30. Okay, so this is the maxima. And this is the maximum. Okay, part B, it says use the relative, the graph to find any values at which f has a relative minimum, which is the x value. And then, of course, it, use the equation again to calculate the relative minima. So right here at 1, 2, 3, 4, at 4, there appears to be a relative minimum. So we're identifying that just through observation. And then if we want to find the minima, which is the y value, then we use the equation for y, which is this right here. f of x is the same thing as y. And then you can copy this side, plugging in the number that um, you identified as the x value at the minimum. So this is going to be 4 cubed minus 15 Put the 4 in there again, everywhere you see an x, plus 24 times x plus 19. This you might want to put in your calculator because the numbers are going to get pretty big. So here we go. We're going to try that. We're going to go 2 times 4 raised up to the third power, minus 15 times... 4 raised up to the second power, plus 24 times 4, plus 19. And I got 3. And you can visually look to see what's going on uh, with this problem. We don't know what the scale is, but because none of that is mentioned, so um, we have to rely on these calculations. I'm going to do this one more time just to make sure, but 4 cubed, I know, is 64 times 2, and then this would be 15 times 16 minus 15 times 16, just to double check, plus 24 times 4 plus 19. Yep, 3. Okay, so here we have the relative minima. Just like here, we had the relative maxima. That's what you're finding when you find the y value. And then the x values are called the relative maximum, M-U-M. And the relative minimum. Okay, moving on to tests of symmetry. We just did a couple of problems regarding relative max and relative min. So we are now looking at the various um, tests for symmetry. 
when we want to find out whether a function or a graph, uh, they don't have, it doesn't have to be a function, but when we want to find out whether a graph wraps around the x-axis as the picture that you're seeing there, that wraps around the x-axis and is therefore said to have um, x-axis symmetry. Uh, sometimes a graph wraps around the y-axis and that would be y-axis symmetry. And we also have origin symmetry where we see images that through a rotation we could superimpose on each other in the first and third quadrant or second and fourth quadrant. And there are algebraic tests to determine whether these um, symmetries occur. So they're saying with respect to um, symmetry for the y-axis, when your graph wraps around the y-axis, you should be able to plug in negative x for x in the equation and come up with the original equation. That's how you can test whether your graph is going to have uh, y-axis symmetry. Okay, and that is mentioned right here, symmetric with respect to the y-axis, you should be able to do this substitution. So when you're doing y-axis symmetry, you're plugging in the negative x for, for x. If you're going to try and see if it's symmetric to the y-axis, or sorry, to the x-axis, then you're going to be plugging in negative y for y. So kind of the opposite. Testing for y-axis symmetry, do the substitution for the x's. Testing for x-axis symmetry, do the substitution for the y's. And always, even through this substitution, you are looking to actually do the substitution, but yet get the original equation. That's how you know that it has that particular type of symmetry that you are testing for. Of course, you can also put the graph if you have um, the function and the way to put the get it graphed, and you can look at the graph to see if it actually wraps around the y-axis or the x-axis to verify what you're finding algebraically. Now, if you want to know if something has symmetry with respect to the origin, then what you'd be doing in that case is a double substitution. These substitutions combine. You'd be plugging in negative x for x as well as negative y for y. And in doing both of those substitutions, if you end up with the original equation you started with, then the graph is said to have origin symmetry. Okay, so with this one, um, we're going to look at this and we're going to look to see what we can do here as far as determining x-axis, y-axis, or origin symmetry. Okay, so I'm going to plug in, I'm going to try right away, I know that this y squared, you can plug in different things for it and still end up with y squared. So this is kind of a clue zeroing in on this term. Uh, if you were to plug in negative y for y, because you certainly can't plug in an x for it, you can only plug in negative x for x and negative y for y. Um, look what you would get. You would go x is equal to, we're plugging in negative y for y. So when we're plugging in negative y, where there used to be a y, we're testing for x-axis symmetry. Notice that when I do plug in negative y for my y value, do I get the original equation? This would be x. Uh, negative y squared is negative y times negative y, so just y squared. Notice that I get the very same equation that I started with. So the test that we just performed when you're plugging in negative y for y is x-axis symmetry. And you could always put that in your calculator to see if it is, is really true to verify that it has x-axis symmetry. Remember, if you're putting something like this into the calculator, you have to solve for y. You'd have to pull this negative 1 over to the other side, at which case it would become positive 1. You'd have a y squared. You'd then have to take the square root here as well as here. But on the side, not where the square is, but on the other side, you must report both the positive and negative root. So as we, we did do a problem like this, in a previous section where we were putting a graph in in parts. This would be one part, positive square root of x plus 1. This would be the other part, negative square root of x plus 1. Now we have predetermined that this 
graph wraps around the x-axis. And you can use your calculator in many cases to check that out. I mean, it doesn't stop the need for, you You know, you have to be able to show the work to show that you know the tests for symmetry. But you can also put this in the calculator to verify. So let's see. We were going to put in positive square root of x, second square root of x, plus 1. Close it. And then we were going to put the negative version of that same expression, square root of x plus 1. One. Now let's see if it wraps around the x-axis as we have predetermined with the algebraic test that we just did. Yep, there's a part on top, part on bottom. Yes, yeah, so that definitely has x-axis symmetry. If you were to crease your paper right on the x-axis and then open it up, you would have matching images on either side of the x-axis, above it and below it. That's said to be x-axis symmetry. For this one, let's see. For this one, if we plug in negative x for x, we are not going to get an x cubed. Remember, these plugins that you do, you're looking to get the original equation with, um, you know, with no changes when you're testing for symmetry. So if I was to put a negative x in there, I'm going to get not x cubed like it originally says. I'm going to get uh, negative x cubed. Uh, if I was to put in a negative y for y, I would not be getting what it says here originally. Originally, I'd be getting negative y. But since these both have an odd power, I could try the test for being for having origin symmetry, which would be negative x for x and simultaneously negative y for y. Okay, negative x cubed means negative x times negative x times negative x. Negative times negative times negative is negative x cubed. Let's move that down a little bit. So negative x cubed on the right-hand side, negative y on the left-hand side. You can divide both of these by negative 1 to get rid of these negative coefficients, and you end up with x cubed is equal to y which is the original equation. So even upon plugging in negative x for x and at the same time negative y for y, which happens to be the test for origin symmetry. So we say that this has origin symmetry. I'm not going to put that one in the calculator, but we just practiced on uh, a couple of the algebraic tests that were that were described here and found out that one of our graphs has x-axis symmetry while the other one had origin symmetry. Okay, moving to the next page, we also have these tests that we can run in order to determine whether the function is even or odd. Now sometimes it's just really obvious as to whether it's even or odd. We'll talk about that as we get further down this page. But definitions for testing whether something, whether a function is an even function. You should be able to plug in negative x everywhere that you see an x and get the same original equation that you started with. And if you can do that, it is said to be an even function. So one thing I wanted to point out is that the graph of an even function is said to be symmetric. Every time that a function is even, it will be symmetric to the y-axis. It will wrap around the y-axis just as you're seeing right here. See, this wraps around the y-axis. If you creased your paper on the y-axis, you'd have matching images on either side of the y-axis. Okay, odd functions. Odd functions, you can do that same test where you plug in negative x wherever there's an x, but you will not be getting the same original equation you started with. Rather, you'll be getting the function with all of the signs switched. That is what this means. This means that you'll get the opposite of x, meaning all the signs are the opposite. And if that happens, then the function is said to be an odd function. 
and all odd functions are symmetric with respect to the origin.